Hello and welcome to the course on stochastic processes. In this video I'll try to motivate why you may want to study stochastic or random processes. Uh, actually the term stochastic and random uh, are, are synonyms that mean the same thing. And actually it's just a name for probability models, uh, for signals or functions in time or space. In fact, there are many examples of such probability models, but before we dive into the mathematical theory, I think it would be a good idea to, sh to look at a few examples uh, of real-world uh, problems or real-world signals where it might make sense to model them as stochastic processes or random processes. So in this video, we are covering a speech signal. We look at receive power on a radio transmission. We look at some data on acceleration, and we look at a noise signal. So in the first example, I recorded the, the word stochastic processes on the computer and plotted it as a function of the sample index. I repeated it a number of times, but here I've shown only two of such plots. The signal looks Kind of, kind of strange. It doesn't look like a function that you usually find in mathematical courses. It would be very difficult to write up this in, in terms of polynomials or cosines and, and so. And even if it could, I doubt it would actually help us any, anywhere to have such a formula. If you record it, or if you compare the first recording to the second recording, you notice that those are not exactly the same. They don't look exactly the same, even though I said the same word and more or less, I tried to say it in the same way. This one is a bit later than this one, but you also see that there are small differences in the signal here and there. Despite of that, actually, the recordings looks uh, or sounds quite similar when, when I play it back. So they're, they're actually very similar to my ears, but there are some variations in the signals, but these may be less relevant for my ears. And as engineers, we may be interested in modeling such recordings for a number of reasons. Uh, we want, may want to uh, compress the sound. So in case we have some information on, on what is relevant and what is not in the signal, we can use that to compress the sound in a, in a nice way, nice to our ears. Secondly, we may want to denoise the signal. So to remove all this tiny bits of noise uh, in various periods. And for that, we would also need some kind of model of the structure of the signal here. And finally, the example I would like to mention here is speaker recognition. So say you're building a security system and you want to make sure that it's only the teacher of stochastic processes who come in. You would ask them to, to utter the worst sto stochastic processes and you would, re you would record a signal like this or like that now as the system would have to decide is it the right person so here it would have to look like or look for specific features in the signal that you can uh, so you can be sure that it's the right person you 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 let into the building but as you can see you have to adapt for these variations that you may have in the signal our second example is from telecommunications uh, engineering it's a set of data from a measurement taken at Aalborg University. Here a radio transmitter was mounted on a mast, transmitting a signal that was received by a, a receiver mounted on a, a van driving on, on the highway. Um, and the signal power was recorded as a function of the travel distance along the highway. And this is the result we get. Um, the signal fluctuates along the uh, the travel distance. It, it fluctuates quite a lot. A lot. This is uh, normalized power in decibels. So what we have here is roughly a factor hundred from the the max to the min of the uh, of the power, and we can see it, it fluctuates in a somehow uh, not very uh, predictable manner. In fact, if we were to uh, run the experiment again, most likely we would get something that looked similar but not the same. The particular realization of this measurement here is determined by the propagation conditions during the measurements. And this we can't repeat because it may depend on the uh, other uh, cars on, on the road, the exact position on the road, etc. etc. 
the telecom engineer would be interested in such models of, of these the received power in order to design better cell phone systems or to simulate cell phone systems, perhaps do performance simulations. So for this third example, I recorded the total acceleration of a tablet computer that I had in my hand while sitting on a rocking chair. The data appears a bit noisy in the beginning and in the end, but there, and this, this coincides with some times where I changed posture in, in, the, in the chair, but otherwise it's fairly periodic. You see here it's, it oscillates. It looks like it could actually be modeled in this part by some type of periodic function, but there are also some ripples on here which may be a bit, bit more difficult to model or to include in, in, in such a model. This type of data or modeling such data may be relevant in, in, in various settings. For instance, if you want to do, uh, do games, in this case you may want to uh, use the accelerometer as a control for uh, control input for the game and you may want to compensate for the the, the motion of the rocking chair uh, so if i want to be able to play the game while sitting in the rocking chair i need to somehow compensate for this uh, for this effect another potential use of such acceleration data would be some kind of biometry uh, you you may want to recognize a walker say that is holding the the tablet so not sitting in a chair perhaps but walking and the question is could you do that by actually uh, from the data of the acceleration both of these types of application would would uh, require some sort of model for these signals here so the final example is a, a noise signal that i recorded in the, in the lab I made a very dull experiment, dull measurement using an oscilloscope and a 100 kilo ohm uh, resistor. So I, I simply measured the, the voltage across this resistor using this particular uh, oscilloscope probe. Theoretically, I should be able to measure a small noise signal due to thermal noise in the resistor. But the, the signal looked much more complicated like this. And in fact, what we can see here is that we have a very strong periodic signal with some variations, uh, random variations on it. Um, and I took several measurement run and every time I got something slightly different. Um, in fact, what this is, is a, a hum signal due to electromagnetic noise of all the other apparatus in the, in the lab. It is not exactly periodic. You see here, this spike here is much less here and there are other variations. This, this particular part of the signal looks different from this part of the signal. So it is something that is somehow, somewhat unpredictable in some sense. So you may want to model such signals to uh, study stability of systems toward noise. Uh, you also may want to simulate systems with, uh, with noise. And finally, you may want to provide algorithms to overcome the noise. So these were four examples of signals that may be modeled as uh, random processes. They, they have in common that there are some certain unpredictability or uncertainty to them, or maybe unrepeatability. We can't repeat the, the same measurement, even if, you, if we really wanted to, we really tried to. There is an endless list of such examples, and you may come up with your own uh, examples closer related to your own line of study. In the next video, we will try to develop uh, the mathematical definition of a stochastic process. But before ending this video, I'll just make a small remark, or you may say disclaimer. In the beginning of the video, I said that I would give a few examples where signals could be modeled by stochastic processes. This phrase was not chosen by chance. I deliberately avoided saying, we will look at real world examples of stochastic processes. This is because I don't know if a stochastic process actually exists in real life. And I didn't want to claim that a particular phenomenon observed in real world is actually stochastic or not. This question I think is better left to the philosophers to answer. Here we are not concerned what the real things are, but more concerned with the important question of how to model such signals, how to develop signals that are 
or models for signals that are unpredictable, uncertain, or unrepeatable in some way. So as long as our models represent the situation well enough for engineering purposes, we're all happy and contented. And stochastic processes are in many cases good models.